Hello, and thanks for coming along to And We Have an Office Dog, the digital agency podcast where we talk to agency owner directors and learn more about what makes them tick. From the things that make them similar to the things they'd rather have known sooner, where they've had success, and where they've learned some hard lessons. All will be revealed. With your host, Chris Simmons, the agency coach, and he'll be talking to a different awesome agency person in each episode, asking them four questions and seeing where the conversation takes us over the next 25 minutes. Okay, so let us begin. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, voiceover guy. And on the podcast today, we've got Anna from Quibble Content. How are you doing, Anna? Yeah, good. Thank you very much. Welcome to the podcast. And it's, hey, well, it's a sunny day when we're recording, so it feels a bit more positive. Indeed, indeed it does. <laughs> well, I've not got so much sunshine. It's a little bit. It's a little bit cloudy here at the minute. But <laughs> so, so where are you based? Where's Quibble Content? Um, so we are based in Rutland. I don't know if you've heard of it. Tiny, tiny county. Indeed, I have. So many people like, where's Rutland? And like, yeah, I think I drove been... through it for about a quarter of a second once. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds about right. So, yeah, yeah, smallest county. Absolutely beautiful, though. Um, so it's, like, literally in the middle of, like, the UK. So it's quite well situated, even though it's, yeah, only yeah. a small county itself. <laughs> I, 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 I used to, th- I mean, it, it, it's basically right next to Lincolnshire, isn't it? Uh, Lincolnshire, Nottinghamshire, Leicestershire, Northamptonshire, Cambridgeshire, like, literally... Yeah. That's where, everyone, <laughs> that's where all the all the, the people come to meet. Oh, exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so 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 firstly, uh, tell me a little bit about Quibble Content. Give us a plug, just in case a potential client's listening or a potential of new course. member of staff. Um, well, I mean, we go by Quibble now. Um, we kind of <laughs> that's all right. Um, the reason being because we 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 started off doing um, and focusing mainly on the content, and we did branch out when my partner joined. Um, so we do a lot of more technical um, work as well now, but I mean, it all goes hand in hand. Yeah. Um, so everything we do, like we do obviously the content strategy analysis and we do, you know, the the technical SEO, we do the the paid ads as well. So we do have like the full marketing mix here. Um, and yeah, we can work with all sorts of, of types of businesses. I mean, we we pride ourselves, I would say, on on the relationship side of things. So mm. we are a small agency, so we, we really do get to know our clients, which is probably yeah one of the main things that I would say I'd love. Yeah, so so how long have you been going for? Oh gosh, so since 2016. Um, so it which was, feels like an age ago, given all the things that happened in the last few years. Oh my gosh, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and so what would you say has been one of the biggest successes since you since you started the agency? Oh gosh, um, the biggest successes is that kind of personal, or would you say from a business standpoint? Well, all businesses personal. So no. up to you. I mean, yeah. I, th- I think, you know, to, to have started in 2016, to have gone through a pandemic to, you know, to, to, to all of the things that have happened. I, I suspect there's been some business success as well as some personal success along the way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think as a person um, like myself, I've definitely grown, um, I think, in terms of confidence. And I've always kind of thought of myself as kind of quite not necessarily shy because I can be quite outspoken as well but I have like both sides of me and I think initially when I set up Quibble it was like you know you go to those first meetings and client meetings you go to networking and all this kind of stuff and I I would have to go home and go to bed (laughs) it was exhausting I was like what is this yeah (laughs) it's mad isn't it and and I was like yeah so I'd I'd go go back home (laughs) I have my nap um, but now, obviously, I don't have to do. <laughs> it's a luxury if I get enough. God, can you imagine, like the the founder of a company starting off going to uh, sell some sell some content uh, strategy, and then having to go quickly go for a nap in between <laughs> in between meetings. <laughs> I, I think it's just there's such a lot going on when you first set up. Um, yeah. so, there really so, yeah, is. <laughs> I've definitely grown in that regard um and then yeah in terms of the business I mean yeah I mean we've we've grown I would say slowly but in in a very stable way like we see a lot of businesses a lot of agencies and you know there's always different businesses setting up and they come and they go 
and I think you know we we hit that five year mark and then we're obviously going beyond that and I think that was one of the main focuses for me was not to kind of grow too quickly one for the company culture but yeah. two because I wanted to let people know that we are here to stay and yeah. we are a very very stable business so if you come and work with us you know we're here for the long term basically um and yeah that so far has has been achieved and you know we are growing we're looking at hiring again very soon and um yeah I think it's yeah, all good things. I, th- I think um, longevity is a success in of itself, just on its own. Um, like you say, agencies come and go, but also the the people that lead them but burn out. They burn out quick if they don't yeah. have those naps. Yeah, if you don't, have the, <laughs> don't get a nap in, you you're done. For. I would love uh, a nap area. Like that is one of my goals. <laughs> um, you should stick it in the in part of the company culture documentation. There's a little bed in the corner if you want a nap. <laughs> uh, I don't know how well that would go down, but you know. <laughs> um, so, so if you were to go back in time, back to 2016, talk to yourself um, outside of, you know, uh, uh, starting the agency, just as you're about to start, to give yourself one piece of advice, what what one piece of advice would you give yourself? To, oh gosh, um, I would say probably to say you can't do it all and you can't do everything to perfection. Yep. I think I I am definitely one of those people I will take a lot on. I try and help people. Um, well, I've gone through all of like, you know, the the different um, kind of personality testings and things. And it always comes out. I'm very empathetic. And I do. I try and help people. And mm. I think as, as the business has grown, you know, some of the smaller clients that were, you know, overly demanding, like, I love them all like I get I get like the, the people the relationships I build I really want to help them but I'm like you do get to that point where you're like I have to say you know we can't help you anymore you need either yeah. a freelancer or you need to go and, and maybe learn some of this stuff yourself because you know you have to take a step back and think well what's also best for them um absolutely so, yeah. it, it, can, it can be quite exhausting having that level of empathy as well when you when you have to consider um the that for example uh it's not just it's not just the delivery of a service that you're trying to do mm. when, you, when you're like that. Um, and when you're trying to run an agency which has the, that personal element, the personality to it, it can be quite sort of draining personally and emotionally yeah. as well, which which is which is then hard when you have a client that doesn't quite get it or doesn't have the same level of empathy. And yeah. then perhaps sort of you feel like you've been mistreated a bit, but you're still trying to be the good guy. Yeah. Um, I, I think that happens more often than than uh, the most agency founders would, would admit, really. Um, so would you have listened to your own advice back then? <laughs> That's a question, isn't it? I'm uh, I'm good at giving advice. I don't know whether I'm good at taking it. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. It's part, part of the DNA of an agency founder. <laughs> I don't know. I think I would have probably, yeah, I mean, like, you know what? I take that as a challenge. That would have been my problem then. <laughs> yeah. So you, 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 you just, uh, it's a bit like uh, you'd have quit smoking, but taken up drinking instead or something. <laughs> exactly. That sort of thing. Basically. Yeah. It's yeah. Time, isn't it? <laughs> we, we, we're, we're all trying to punish ourselves for something in a past life or something along those lines. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so you, you, the, the empathy side of things, has that ever, has that ever sort of, caused a problem within the agency is or do you find that finding people that are um like like you the owner um is that easy is it hard it's hard I think um especially like when I've been I got either going through the the hiring process like the hiring process oh my gosh like that is something that I I do struggle with because I want again I want to help everybody I want to like bring everybody in and, and mm. one of my things like how I built the business is I want to give everyone the same opportunity no matter what the experience is yeah. like experience to me doesn't necessarily count it's the attitude that they have um so if someone really wants it and they really show that they want it like I want to help them but I you know I can't hire everybody I would love to um yeah. but we're we're not in that position unfortunately so yeah I I do struggle and I think that I mean that's on me more than anything I think in terms of the staff that we have here and the team that we've got like I think they probably see it as well like they see all of my like I'm just a natural normal person like they see yeah. all of my side and they know they can come to me um you know with anything 
which which is great yes. from that from that uh, you know an, an an open kind of trustworthy founder is is yes. is great and one of the one of the key aspects of kind of building that great culture in a team of you know leading your team properly uh is is to show vulnerability at times and yeah. you, know, you don't want to walk in every day crying but at the same time you know you need to show them that you are a human being and that they yeah. can trust being a human being around you otherwise you end up with this kind of false commitment all the time and things like that yeah. and people don't really sort of move forwards properly um it doesn't help with accountability as well at that point because you know if they don't trust you they're not they're, as a person they're not going to know how you're going to react so they just say yes to everything and then they get yeah. everything done <laughs> yeah no exactly i mean they know everybody that I speak to and everyone who knows me knows I'm like super super honest so yes I'm empathetic and like if there's an issue yes I'll help them out but they also know that if I don't agree with something or like I will speak up and I will say yes I will always provide you know if there's a problem I'll provide a solution but um yeah I, I am just very openly honest and I think that helps as well. I think I think I think that does as well, especially from a from a selling point of view. I presume that that that's quite helpful from the sales process with the client because, you know, I I don't know don't know about you, but in the, in the past I've said yes to clients that I probably shouldn't have taken on. Oh, um, yeah. And and now with that sort of honesty and the uh, and and the, the the time you've put into your business, you now know saying no is not a bad thing sometimes, and you know that's yeah. quite quite fine to do. Exactly. And that goes back to the point where I said, you know, you can't do it all. Like if I could have told myself that then, because, yeah, yeah sometimes it's not in the client's best interest and you need to be able to tell them that and not think, oh, no, I should do it for them because I want to help them. Like, yes, help them. But actually, you're not the person to do it. That person over there is or that agency or that freelancer. Mm, um, absolutely. You know, so I, I will, like, I'll never turn anyone away and say, just no, flat out, I'm not going to help you. I will always mm. still try and find either somebody to help them or maybe a training program or or something at least yeah um because then that also appeases that empathetic yeah. side of me <laughs> yeah, exactly it's, it, but then but you know helping people isn't isn't uh isn't isn't, isn't a bad thing it's it can it can be debilitating if you if you let it be because yeah. you're helping everyone and it's causing you new problems but you know helping people is a, is a is a good thing yeah more people should do it <laughs> yeah definitely definitely so, <clears throat> is there something that you kind of over the years you you've either sort of done and kind of regretted but you in doing so you've kind of set yourselves up for, for future success Oh gosh, anything that I've done that I've regretted? Oh gosh, I can't think. So uh, for, for 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 me, I I had um, uh, I I start I, I sort of spun out of the agency a second agency, um, and they were running separately side by side, and I and the the regret I have is is trying to do two things that are both very complicated mm -hmm. at the same time um but that set me up for being able to do a lot of more work and just get on with it yeah it's it's, it's a difficult one because one of my things I have various different sayings and things I live by one is the Dr Pepper thing where you know what's the worst can happen yeah um and the other one is live with no regrets so I'm okay, very so much like live with so no regrets Let's reframe it then. Go on is there something is there something that you've done well or something that's worked out really well the first time round or um something that you you did that's new in the agency and you thought, do you know what, we're gonna do that forever now. That's great. And then it's turned out not quite. Well no, no, thinking just on the positive side. It could be any, you know, something that you've 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 thought someone's come to you in the agency and said, Hey, let's let's do this cool thing. You've said, Go on then. And it's turned out all right. And now you do it as like a standard staple thing or even a service that you offer. Um, <clears throat> what? It's probably not necessarily strictly business related, but I would say it's probably the charitable work that we do. So we um, like, again, it goes back to kind of me <laughs> wanting to help people. Um, but I got involved with the charity. Um, oh, gosh, I can't have been going very long um it must have been probably like 2017 or something and I eventually joined the committee for the mm. charity and um yeah I think like that that in itself has just been I think it's great for confidence because you, you end up speaking to so many different people it's um it's been great in terms of you know we're able to give back and even though like we, we help them with their digital side of things but also because I'm on the committee I'm very much involved mm. um, and, um so I get to go to lots of amazing events which is awesome um we get to see like meet people that we, we wouldn't normally as well 
Um, but it's also good from a point of view, like I hope it instills that 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 mentality into you know the the team here and other people that I speak to that actually yeah doing a little bit of good can be a really really positive thing and there are not enough people do it and I always I think charities you always find that it's the same people helping them mm. um, and I think as in the position that I'm at I have that ability to go and help these people so why wouldn't I yeah. um, I think the only issue or not issue I would say the thing that I've found is that it does take up a lot of your time. Like that, that in itself is is a very difficult thing because if you're having, especially if we're doing various different events throughout the year, like that's, you know, you're, you're organising ticket sales, you're organising getting, you know, the prizes, yeah, yeah. Get amazing prizes, but you've got to source them and you've got to obviously liaise with all the different prize people to try and get them to come in, try and get advertising for them because obviously they want something back in return. Yeah. Um, so it's rewarding, but it's it can sap your energy a little bit as well. And do, have you found that any of the, the the guys in your team have been have wanted to get involved or do something if, for a charity of their own or anything like that because of, yeah. of your your leadership? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I mean, I, like we we we've, we've donated to various different charities, and we always get involved and ask them, you know, what other charities would you like us to help support? Yeah. Um, because I think it's important to give back and I want to, you know, try and get them involved as well. Um Absolutely. see the actual positive stuff and the positive change that actually you can you can make by just doing a little bit. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I think that you know quite a lot of agencies uh, um, do a thing where it's like we'll offer one percent of our mm. net profit a year, or we'll do a charity this or a charity that, and then other agencies kind of. Um, I was speaking to, I can't remember the which, which agency founder it was that um, I recorded with a few weeks ago, where if, um, they their team work on charities uh, as part of a pro bono approach, so yeah. something like. 10 hours a month per person which is like roughly a, a, a retainer client per month yeah. they pick the charity they offer the support they offer the services it's a nice thing to do because people then pick things that they want and I think you know we can do a lot as as leaders in agencies and I think that you know the right leadership approach allows people to go I could help people as well and it's nice yeah. to see it's nice yeah, so if someone's listened through us rambling on about Rutland and things like that throughout this podcast uh, for all this way through and they've been waiting for Anna's one piece of advice. Um, if someone's starting a new agency or they've just started an agency and they're waiting to hear the one piece of one golden nugget from you, what would it be? Just bloody go for it. Like yeah. if you. Yeah, I think if if you if you really, really want it, you'll do it and don't let anyone tell you any different. But just don't do it in Rutland because this town isn't big enough for the both of you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go for it as long as you don't live nearby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, th but yeah, I think it's hard like when, when you are starting out. There's, you know, a lot of a lot of people already out there that's doing mm. a really, really good job. And it can be really easy to think, oh God, I'm not as good as them. Mm. And it's like, no, you you are like if you want it, go get it. Like train yourself up. You know, you don't just have to have these clients and that's the be all and end all. Do stuff on the side. You yeah. know, do all of the practice work. Make sure you've got all of these case studies. It doesn't have to be for a real client. It can be for yourself. Like build your own brand. You know, do all of that kind of stuff to to really showcase what it is that you can do and learn from it. Make mistakes. Don't yeah. have regrets. You know, learn from everything that you do. And yeah there's there's that approach of kind of fail fast if you if you fail really fast you'll you, you know obviously it doesn't work if you fail ma magnificently fast but if you fail fast you're learning quickly you're learning a yeah. lot and if you just go for it then that's good obviously yeah. at the same time you need to temper that with the balance of scaling too quickly because of cash flow you need to make sure you yeah. scale, don't scale too quickly so that you know you accidentally over overreach a little bit with with the size of the agency and you know you need to temper that depending on 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 where you are your client type all that sort of stuff but i think i think it is really good advice to kind of if you're thinking about it go for it yeah. if you if you just started it well bloody stop listening to this and get on with it yeah because i think <laughs> you will soon find out if you don't want to continue with it and want to go in-house again i think exactly. you've just got to try these things and yeah, um, yeah if you are going to do it like you said a second ago cash flow like manage your budgets because a lot of people don't 
and I think that's where they then kind of fall over themselves um like have have that safety pot you know like build that that cash up so that you've got it for that rainy day so if your biggest client you know just decides to leave all of a sudden could be no fault of your own whatsoever mm -hmm. but you've still got that to fall back on um yeah. And I think yeah that's that's key as well yeah, absolutely. It's fun. It's it it is is important to make sure you balance these things together yeah, for sure. Definitely. And that, and and just get on with it is the yeah. is the general advice, uh, which I think is excellent advice to end the podcast on. So thanks very much for coming along, Anna. Thank you for having me. And in our next podcast, we'll be talking to another agency leader to l see the lessons they've learned or listen to the lessons they've learned. In fact, Christ, Chris, come on. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 other things that I'm going to cut this bit out because <laughs> bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs>